did you have instant success or were there struggles? Can you talk about those first couple years as um, far as how you focused on building your business from the jump? Um, that was pretty easy. When I was at Austin, it was easy because everybody was wanting to buy a house. Um, I did a lot of open houses. I did open houses. I, I had a partner kind of, and he and I would just go and we would, we'd knock on doors. We would, um, I met people just through, um, social gatherings and things. And so that the Austin was pretty easy. Yeah. It was, it, the business was just so easy then too. Yeah. Everybody was ready to buy, buy, buy. And then when I got to Columbus, nobody was ready to buy. Everyone was scared to death and it was, yeah, it was bad. So you're here. So you get licensed, you're here for six months and then you go back, go back to LA. Yeah. Um, was that for husbands? Yeah. Then? Okay. Yeah, he, he went back into, I don't know, his video games or film or whatever. Um, I did some TV stuff, but um, I never got into real estate and I don't know why I'm so mad that I didn't. When I look at it, I watch all, I watch every real estate show that's out there, and I'm like, why did I not get into it? Yeah. But while we were there, we did buy a duplex on the west side of LA, and we uh, renovated one side, and we were on um, one of the HGTV shows. The, okay. Yeah. I forget what it was called. Um, it was when you renovated, and then they judged your work. and then oh, okay. Yeah, and then you made whatever. So if we spent ten thousand, and the pros would have spent twenty thousand, you won the difference. Gotcha. So so we did really well on that. We ranked it like the ninety ninety eighth percentile. So anyway, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that was my one thing I did in real estate in LA. <laughs> so then we then we moved back, and instead of going to Columbus, we moved to Courthouse. Okay. And that is where I uh, really focused on business. What um what year was that when you moved back? It was like eight years ago. Okay. Something okay. like that, yeah. Yeah, so you were so you were out in LA then, really around that time when HGTV was really starting to pick take off with all of the shows. That I mean, I was in college in, in 2010, 2011, graduated in 2011, and that's kind of what piqued my interest was part of the ah. flipping shows and all of those things. Yeah. You know, hey, this looks great. My family always bought older homes and we just fixed them up ourselves and, you know, not to flip, but just to live in. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, if I'm going to get into the business of, of investing, I should probably learn a little bit of real estate. So um, but that was during that peak of of really those shows starting to take off. Yeah, it was. I, I wish I could remember. I forget. It was called um, it was on the DIY network. OK. HGTV. Um, Produced it and you can find it, you know, and all their. Hey, that's their, right up your background. You got TV and real estate. I know that's why I had to do it, but <laughs> well, gosh, it was a, we had six weeks to do it and we were living in it. And the, uh, our house was uh, 1200 square feet total. So we lived oh, in wow. six, 600 square feet. Yeah. So it was not easy. It was not an easy thing to do. It was yeah. uh, very, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, very bad. <laughs> but I loved it. My husband, not so much. Yeah. So anyway, uh, hey. we're divorced now. So that might be the cause. <laughs> it's, it's chalk it up as an experience. That's how I look yeah. at things. I love it. Right? Yeah, I'd, I'd do it again. So you end up moving back to Central Ohio, specifically Washington Courthouse, about eight years ago. So this would have been 2014. Yes, 2014. Um, and, and did you keep your license active or did you have to reactivate at that time? I had to take everything over. <laughs> so silly. I was so burnt out when I left yeah. in 2008. I was like, oh, I'll never do this again. And then um, when I moved home, I thought, well, I won't be able to make any money in Washington Courthouse. So I'll just flip. You know, I thought, well, yeah. I'll go ahead and get my license. I'll flip. I'll be fine. And then um, I, I have so many family members that live here and friends just from growing up. And I'd been gone for like 25 years, but when I came back, it kind of just fell into my lap. Like, oh, you're, you've got your real estate license. Oh, okay. Well, will you list it? And then I kind of brought everything that I had learned from Austin and LA 
and what a lot of people in the cities were already doing. Yeah. But <clears throat> a lot of social media. I did a ton of Facebook, everything. I um, I love interiors, anything, regardless. And yeah. so I started staging my own listings. And I think that is probably what helped me with my business is the word got out that I staged. And I, I truly, even though you can read about this, you can uh, watch any, any show in the world and they will tell you that you need to stage your house. People still don't believe it. Yeah. It's so dramatic. You know, I have people use me um, and I don't even list their house, but I, I still stage their house because it's true. I mean, I, there's, there's, it just depends on the list price, but I mean, it can be, you can, you can make 10,000, 20,000, a hundred thousand dollars more just by staging, especially well, homes that are really weird. You know, when they have uh, something quirky about them, a lot of people cannot envision it to look any different than what they see. Yeah. So. That's, that's exactly what I was just going to say. You know, a lot of times buyers have a, have a hard time picturing you know, what a room would look like set up differently, or, I mean, even something simple as paint colors, right. Yeah. And, and, Huge. you know, how that really changes the feel and the look of a room or, or having flooring that's, that's throughout the whole house. It's the same, you know, to, to keep the continuous flow. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, one thing that you found, um, whether by design or not was <clears throat> you, you found your unique selling proposition in, and probably what I'll say is a, a lot of times small towns are behind the times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and think yeah. about it, 2014, 2015 social media still wasn't what it was today no, or what no, it no. is today. Right. Back then it was still, you know, it wasn't as big as, as what it is today in agents businesses. And, and um, you know, the fact that you kind of already had some of that experience in bigger cities um, to bring back to Washington courthouse, I think really caught everyone off guard in a good way. Right. Yeah. You know, you got well, their attention. Well, you know, and it's hard. It's really hard because you are raised in that puritanical thing. You don't brag. You don't push yourself. You don't talk about yourself. But after being in L.A. and being in <clears throat> working in the entertainment industry, I, I have a friend that's a um, a she's a hostess for one of the um, TV shows, one of the talk shows. And I remember her telling me. If you don't tell people what you're doing, they will never know. Mm. And for some reason that something so elementary really hit. And I was like, oh, that's true. Like, how would anybody know if I don't tell them? Yeah. So I know that seems really basic, but that's kind of what got me out of my shell because, you know, it's uncomfortable to talk about yourself. Sure. I don't like it. I hate it. But mm. you kind of have to. Well, and, you know, it's just top mind awareness, right? right? You know, the more they see you, the more they hear you, um, the more they're going to think of you. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, one of the things I try to uh, tell agents, you know, to do, obviously we don't need to go and puke real estate on everyone. Like who's looking to buy, sell or invest, right? Like, but there are ways as, as real estate agents that we can show people that we're busy and we're active doing the business. You know, yeah. um, yeah. something as simple as posting pictures about state staging a house or, you know, posting pictures about you going to, you know, a networking event or talking about, you know, a meeting that you had with your lender or whoever like that. All of that matters. It doesn't always have to be who can I help? Who can I help? Who can I help? And I think that's yeah. where some agents struggle is the the documentation of of um, what we do day in and day out. Yes, I agree. Yeah, because it is hard to find content sometimes, you know, for social media. But I have, um, I'm lucky because I was in te television news and content is what, you know, you have to find content every day. So yeah. I can kind of make a story out of anything, really, I tell you the truth. <laughs> I mean, if this couch, I can tell you about the couch, you know. Anything yeah. so that comes a lot easier for me than a lot uh, than other people just because they don't have that background. But um, it is important to be out there all the time and your name out there just because name recognition is big. You know, they yeah. may not even know anything about me, but they've seen my name, so they call. 
Well, and especially, you know, in, in small towns, it's a little bit harder in bigger cities, not impossible, but, you know, having the market share, right. Yeah. Being oh, able yeah. to own and dominate the market of, of, you know, where you live and, and, you know, what we would call our backyard. Yes. Right. Um, and I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure the whole TV, you know, and, and, and journalism and all that background has played a huge impact in your thought process of, of, you know, how do I let people know that I'm the go-to agent for, for this area? Yeah. It's, uh, I always remember that, um, people have very short attention spans. If you blab on and on and on, they'll be like, okay, bye. So I try <laughs> to make everything concise, boom, get it out there. And you know, if they want to know more, they can ask. Yeah. Let me ask you this, just cause I'm curious, cause you do have the more of the media background. Um, for those that are, so I, I was always taught like, you know, we're not, we are marketers that happen to sell real estate, right? Yeah, That's how right. we should picture ourselves. Yeah. I was watching a Rupert Murdoch, uh, docu docu series a couple months back and just talk about how he built his empire around mm -hmm. print and news and all of these things and how basically he's the most powerful man, if you think about it in, in the world right now, because of how much news that he owns and controls oh, yeah. got me thinking as real estate agents, we, and do you, I wonder if you agree or disagree, should we be positioning ourselves as we are the media company that happens to be selling real estate? Oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Just because, um, regardless, we have to always think about our client, First, and I don't know if media media is good for us, but is it good for our client? It is because we're pushing their product. But like I would, I would definitely want to be a real estate market in a media market. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think we should be nothing but marketers. Um, you know, it's more important to have one client and have them uh, have a good experience than a million clients, in my opinion. I mean, I want to, I want to be able to go to bed at night and be happy and know that my clients are happy and that everything has gone well. Um, with Keller Williams, they, their motto is, well, it was when I was there, I, at least it's win, win or no deal. And that's what I really love. Mm. Um, I want everybody to feel happy when they, when they, leave that closing table. I hope the buyer and the seller are happy. Now, a lot of times people go into these transactions with a win lose mentality. Yeah. And that I hate because I'm a very competitive person in general. And I had to, I've had to kind of taper that down. Of course, I want to know more than the other agent. You know, if I'm right. a list agent, I want to know more than the buyer regardless, but I don't want to annihilate that person. I want to work with that person. Right. And to, to, you know, have that win-win um, transaction. So to get back to the media, I think if we are um, good agents and we are doing our jobs, then it's easier to do the media, I guess. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm right there with you on a win-win. You know, negotiations is, you know, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give? And let's come to the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah.